So, oh my goodness, darling friends. In this session, so if you remember in the last session, we had lots of fun with that traveling step, utilizing the hip drop and the hip lift. I thought we'd carry on that thread of traveling steps, but this time let's work with the movement known as a traveling camel. Traveling camel feels amazing. It's really good for you. It's really good for your digestive system. And it's pretty Moorish. Once you get going, you just want to do more and more and more of it. So next time you're traveling down to the bus stop, you're going to be doing it in style. <laughs> or around the, around the supermarket <laughs> with the trolley. <laughs> or the cart, I guess you call that in America, is it? <laughs> um, let's dive straight in. We're going to have lots of other fun with shimmies and all sorts of things besides. into our basic stance. Do that little checklist through your body. I'm gonna assume that you know your basic stance by now, how to really introduce good alignment through your body. If you're not sure of that, you can check back on the Belly Dancing for Beginners playlist on the Little Egypt Studio YouTube channel. Take a deep breath in here. Fuel the muscles as you use them. Bring your hands to the side. Let's just gently elevate through the elbows, relax the wrists. Let's move into a gorgeous warm up. Let's loosen up through the body, warm up all the muscles and joints, making sure that you can dance for longer without fatiguing, that the movements are gonna flow and they're gonna feel lovely. Let's make that a little bit faster if you want to. So you're just shifting your weight over to one side and then the other, passing through center. And as you do that, you're encouraging this lengthening effect through the waist. Nice. Yes, you're beautiful. Stick to the top. Now, do you remember that anchoring technique? Similarly, you could look that up if you're unsure. But well, this really helps to define and refine your movement in belly dance, but also it really helps to target muscles during a warm up phase as well. So now we're lengthening and strengthening not only just through the waist, but also all the muscles of your belly and your back. Let's make that movement a bit bigger still if that feels right for you. You can bring in that wave motion through your arms. And we're gonna look at that in a bit more detail in coming sessions. Woo! Nice. Really beginning to move through the shoulders now. Roll the shoulder back. <laughs> Wee! Doesn't that feel nice? Into center, slide through your hip. We're gonna take the hip forwards and back. Keep that neutral position through the hip so it's not here and here like so. We're not tilting and tucking. It's coming forwards and back. Your tailbone faces down towards the ground. Now in order for that to happen, you should have a bend to your knee and your leg is doing like so. So it stays with this bend throughout and you just Move further into that. Okay, let's take it side, bring it back. To the side, bring it forwards. Side, take it back. To the side, bring it forwards. You're gonna feel that deeper warming through the muscles of belly, waist, and back. And we're also releasing through the hips. Ah, encouraging mobility through the hips and through the spine as well. Bring it into center. So here at Little Egypt Studio on the weekend, we just hosted Scotland's World Belly Dance Day celebrations, Isla's Hafla, which this was the 16th year it had been run. And we came live, we broadcast live from Little Egypt Studio. And it was such a pleasure to have Isla joining us here. We of course did the socially distancing, but it was amazing. We were actually joined, although it was traditionally Scotland's 
World Belly Dance Day celebration and the Kathy Smith Tribute Hapla, we were joined by people all over the world. It was amazing. So we had like over a hundred people joining us live on Zoom. It was such a celebratory energy. So sharing some of that energy with you today. Let's come into center here. We're gonna drop through one hip, drop through the other. Drop through one hip, so you're using your knee to create that motion, drop, drop. Hip is in neutral, drop, drop. Are you ready? A little bit faster maybe? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So here we're not emphasizing the drop or the lift. I want just to keep that nice and smooth. Right now we're using this for the purposes of a warm up, for the practice of this movement and for a little bit of body conditioning. You're gonna feel this strengthening through your legs. <laughs> do you feel that? If you don't feel that through your thighs, what I want you to do is just to sit down a little bit more into that movement. And the hips come gently, slightly back and down. So it's not here, we're tucked under, pelvic floor muscles are engaged. Yes. We can start to bring a little bit of focus towards the drop motion. Two, three, four. Wow, drop. Two, three, four. Drop, two, three, four. Drop, two, three, four. Yes, well done. Drop two, three, four, drop two, three, four. Well done. So we of course used the hip drop and a bit of the hip lift in the last session and we traveled with those. If you remember those traveling steps that we had, let's just have a little bit of a refresh of that. So you had like a, quite a staccato movement. Step, step, step. Step, step, step. You could add a drop to that. Drop, 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 drop. We. Then the other thing that we had was a smooth, fluid movement in the session before that. We could add with that hip slide if you want to. So that smooth, fluid movement. It's almost like gliding across the floor. Everybody joining me here live, that is beautiful. Gorgeous. Take that in a circle, perhaps. I'm gonna keep that transition smooth and fluid. Make your acceleration smooth and fluid. So you can't see those gear changes. It just seems to happen. You can make that faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Whee! The other way. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Wow, we well done. <laughs> And so in this session, what I really, really wanted to do was to take that traveling up a notch now. And I say up a notch, some people might find this trickier. Some people might find this more fluid and natural and it just happens for you and therefore it feels easier. So let's just talk about, first of all, what we're going to be doing. So thinking about those two traveling styles, so you've got the staccato one where you can really, it's earthy, it's raw, you can sort of feel the gear change and it's quite a masculine energy. And then you had the other one, which is smooth and fluid, and you kind of almost glide along. It's soft, feminine. So in this one, let me just turn this down slightly. Just now. So, what we're gonna do here is have lots of fun working with a camel movement. So in order to build this movement up, let's have a little look at that camel movement in some more depth and we'll start to add in the aspect of traveling. Now, if you've done this before, 
either with me or with another teacher or you've just tried it yourself. First of all, let me say there's lots of different ways that we can look at this, lots of different ways that we can break it down. I'm going to break it down in the most basic, simplest way that I can for you, in a way that relates it towards the way that we use our bodies on an everyday level. From there, we could look at other ways of illustrating it in our minds, um, but let's stay with this for now. So, I'm going to exaggerate this movement pattern a little bit for you, just really so you can see the mechanics of it. So we're going to take a nice big juicy bend through the knees, okay? And then from here what you're going to do is as you breathe in, you're going to expand and lift through the rib cage. Then we're going to roll the movement down the spine. So in order to roll it down through the spine, you need to pull back to where you came from. So you're going to come back and at the same time pull in with your upper abs. Contract through your upper abs if that's possible for you if you're able to target through there. If not, just visualize that happening and know that with the visualization it will start to happen. Then we're gonna roll it all the way down through the low back. So here, if you imagine if you're lying on the ground that you've lifted your hips up, you've tilted them, and then you can come down and place your low back on the ground. So if you know what I mean there, so you've got your whole back, your whole back to so your low back, whole back to low back against the floor. So it's all in alignment there. And then you're gonna allow the, t the hips to tilt into neutral. From here, there might be a tiny, tiny little bit of flexion through your hips as you rotate and tilt the hips, okay? I don't want you to hyperextend through there. Just be aware that there will be natural tilt there, but you want to aim to bring the hip into neutral. From there, that's the end of the movement. And then we're gonna rotate that round, we're going to complete that in um, a full cyclical flow of movement. So make sure you're in your basic stance. Let's try that again. I'm just going to face the other way, just give you a different angled view. Deep breath in. Raise the low section of ribcage upwards. So this is where the movement is focused. And then from here, you're going to pull back with your ribcage, pull back. The low section of ribcage comes down towards the ground on diagonal, and then you're going to roll going to engage through upper abs, mid abs, low abs, pelvic floor, tilt through your pelvis to neutral. Let me show you from the back here, we're going to lift up, roll down. Your knees are naturally going to bend more here and then you're going to tilt the pelvis to neutral. You're going to lift up, roll down, knees bend, hips tilt. This is it really slow and quite exaggerated through the movement of the knees. So it comes all the way down. Well done. Yes. Would you like to try that a little bit faster? Yes. Let's try it a little bit faster. Here we go. All right. Katie, Isla, Paulette, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, here we go. Let's go, lift it up, roll down. Let's roll that movement down. So tune in however you're feeling within yourself right now, tune into your own body and do what feels good for you. So it might be to take a really big movement or it might be to make that a little bit smaller. Whichever you're going for, whatever option, however much effort and energy you're putting in there, what I want you to do is try and focus on making that movement equal the front of the body to the back of the body so that the front of the body and the back of the body are making the same amount of effort. So you're gonna feel this more through the muscles on the front of the body and on the back of the body, the muscles might feel secondary motion, but what you'll feel in the back of your body is your spine really moving. So this, is really, this movement's actually really, really good for spinal flexion for flexibility through your spine, for maintaining mobility, for increasing synovial fluid production between the joints of the vertebrae in order to lubricate them and keep them healthy. I'll encourage you just to be careful if you have any kind of spinal injury and of course, always following the advice of your medical practitioner where that is concerned. Let's try that a little bitty faster if you feel ready. And then we'll start to look at the mechanics of traveling with the camel. It's so lovely. It feels Moorish. It's oh, quite delicious. All right, here we go. So we're just going to work with this piece that's on. I'm going to lift 
and roll. I'm going to turn up a little, lift up, roll down, lift up, roll down, lift, roll down, lift up, roll down, lift and roll, lift and roll, lift, roll, lift, roll, lift, roll, lift, roll. Okay, this time, that looked amazing. I could feel your energy there. That felt awesome, didn't it? Woo, love it. From here, let's have a little shot, shall we? Let's try <laughs> moving our weight from one side to the other. So rather than having your weight stationary, both feet flat on the ground there, let's have a little fun of shifting your weight one side of the body to the other. Now, it might be for you that this is where you progress in this session. And it might be that you come back to this video uh, when it's uploaded on YouTube, you might come back to this video again and try again with the actual traveling step. But take it to where it feels like progress for you. If it feels like, oh, that's one step too many, then just bring it back. Just bring it back um, down to where it's comfortable. Okay, so let's do one in the center, both feet flat on the floor and your weight is centered over each foot. Now, let's try to shift your weight slightly into the right foot. So I could pick up my left foot. This, this is actually my right, but for you, it's my left. From here, let's just try, perform that movement on the right side of the, of the body, really. It's, it's actually both sides of the body. So the movement is on both sides of the body, but your weight is on your right foot there. Let's try that again. Ready? Here we go. So we're going to lift up, roll down, knees bend, hips tilt. So I could move that foot if I wanted to, but I'm just keeping it there to help me balance. So you can keep your foot flat on the floor if you like, or you could just very slightly elevate through your heel, just an inch or two. So we're gonna lift, roll down, knees bend, hips tilt. Lift up, roll down, knees bend, hips tilt. Let's do two more of those. Lift, roll down, knees bend, hips tilt. Lift up, roll down, knees bend, well done. In center, both feet together. So your weight is centered here. Maybe a bit faster. Wow. So just to differentiate, just in case anybody is uncertain, we're working with a camel rather than a belly roll. Two different movements. Sometimes they are confused in the belly dance scene. Um, we're working with a camel. So it's, it's not a roll just literally of the belly muscles. We're using the spine as well. Okay, let's try on the other side. So shift your weight over to your left now, and you could pick this leg up and produce the movement at the same time. Bend through here, place your foot. You can either leave the heel down, flat foot, um, for more folkloric feel, or you could lift your toe slightly for more of an oriental or cabaret flow. Lift, roll down, lift, roll down. So it's kind of more modern to be on the ball of your foot there on your toes. But it's more traditional folkloric. Some might say more authentic. Depends where you're from. If your feet are flat on the floor. So try that as well. Do make sure you try both. Bring it back to center here. Okay, well done, well done. Help yourself to a little spot of hydration. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try actually lifting that foot up on the other side with that, if you didn't do that right now. Oh. Mm. Hi. <laughs> it's not often I'm way over there during the class, is it? Hey. All right, here we go. All right, oh, this is a tune. Okay, so this time, I've got like an Omi going on here. So this time we're gonna lift, roll down, knees bend, hips tilt. I want you to just to try and lift your foot in the last section of that movement. So you're gonna lift up, roll down, bend and tilt. Lift up, roll down, knees bend, flick. Lift, roll down, Knees bend, 
flick, lift, roll down, knees bend, flick, lift, roll down, knees bend, flick, lift, roll down, knees bend, flick. You want to try and maintain your height the whole time, keep it nice and smooth and steady. Let's try the other side, shall we? Are you ready? Here we go. Ready and lift, roll down, knees bend, flick, lift, roll down, knees bend, flick. So round about now is when oftentimes what happens is your body wants to be dominant on one hip. So the movement can often become focused just on that hip. And that's fine, that's a movement in itself. But if you're just starting out with this traveling step, with this movement, I think it's really, really important that you're able to actually control the movement and engage both hips at the same time. So it's not here, it's really here. Although on a personal level, I do enjoy the appearance of a camel on a single hip. There's something about the stability and the health benefits that can be gained when it's focused over both hips. All right, so hopefully you had a little shot of traveling, of um, using that little bit of a flick of the foot there and it's shifting your weight side to side and that really prepares you for what we're about to try and do now. So like I said, you might have done this movement before, but it might have been a long time ago that you actually focused in on what's really happening within the movement. And it's so beneficial to return to that. So if maybe you're thinking, oh, well, you know, I know this, I've done this. Um, we're always learning. Because you're always learning new things in life and that informs your body and your movement and the way that you feel when you move. So we never really stop learning in this art form. So let's give it a shot now with the knowledge that we have. Let's bring the arms out to the side, perhaps. So as you bring your arms out to the side in any movement, in belly dance or in movement in general, as soon as you bring your hands wider apart, what you do is you increase your, well, you, you, increase, you increase your range of motion, but you also increase your, um, what's, what's I'm looking for, what I'm looking for? Your center of gravity. Your center of gravity shifts, and you've got more balance ability. You're stabilized. So if you want to, you could bring your hands out to the side further. And what we're gonna try is just working with that staccato movement that we had, which was this one here. It's a very purposeful step. It's earthy. So you don't need to think about being up on toes if you don't want to. In fact, here, all the better if it's a flat foot. So arms wide, we're gonna roll up and step. We're gonna Roll and step. So whereas the last time we did the flick, this time you're rolling, step forward. Yes? So it's a roll and a step. Let me just pin this out of the way so you can see a bit better what's going on. So we're gonna roll and step. Here we go. Are you ready? Ready and roll. Is <laughs> step, nice, well done, here we go. Lift. Step, lift, step. So as you come up with your rib cage, what I want you to do is come shift your weight from your back heel forwards into that forward leg. And then you're gonna roll the movement down the spine as you bring this other foot forwards and your hip comes down into neutral and you step. Other side, so you're gonna lift upwards, and as you lift upwards, you can shift your weight forwards and literally move forward. So you're here, you're gonna lift up and shift your weight forwards out of that back leg, out of that heel. You're gonna roll the movement down whilst lifting up through that back heel. Roll the movement down as you step forwards. It's coming down into your hips. Bring the hips down, tilt the pelvis, and you're gonna step. You're gonna lift, heel comes up, roll, Bring it forwards and step. Yes? Let's try that a little bit faster if you're ready. Ready and roll. Step. Lift, heel comes up, roll, step. Lift, roll, step. Lift, roll, step. Lift, roll, step. Lift, roll, step. 
lift, roll, step, lift, roll, step, lift, roll, step, lift, roll, step. Yes, lift, roll, step, 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 lift, roll, step. Lift, roll, step, lift, roll, step, lift, roll, step, lift, roll, step. Lift, roll, step, 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 lift, roll, step. Nice. One and two and 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 one and two. One and two and one and two and be feeling that really working through your abdominals. You could do that on the spot here. Yay! <laughs> wow, amazing. So there's many different ways that you can step with this movement. You can make it really earthy. And the other thing that you can do is you can travel it to the side and to the other side. So in the next session, we're gonna have lots of fun looking at directional changes with a traveling camel. For now, let's come into center. We're gonna shimmy, use the knees. Woo! Yeah! Amazing. Let's look at that slide of the hip. Wow. Circle to the side, bring it back. To the side, bring it forwards. Side, take it back. To the side, bring it forwards. Side. Take it back, side, bring it forward, side, take it back, to the side, bring it forward. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Other direction, let's try. Wow. Center, shimmy. And then let's travel over to grab a little spot of hydration <laughs> before going into a lovely cool down stretch. Wow, that was amazing. I'm sure you'll see what I mean, how it's so Moorish. It feels so good. And the traveling camel is actually incredible for your digestive system. It's really good for building balance and harmony within the muscles of the body, reducing injury and maximizing general well-being. Come into center, deep breath in. Ah, let's do two more of those, deep breath in. Ah, one more. Ah, hands up to the sky. Really lengthen fingers upwards. Press your heels into the ground. Let's release it out to one side. Oh, bring it round towards center. Unwind from there. Cross to the other side, lengthen. Bring it round. Up to center. Wow. And a really nice opening for your chest, your shoulders, but also for your belly. If you bend through your knees a little, take your hands out to the sides and bring them really wide. You could bring your gaze up towards the sun if you want to. And if it feels right for you, bend through your knees and you can always give a little bit of a lean back. Of course, they take that to where it feels good for you. It might be a tiny movement. Gently back to center, place your hands 
on the back of your head. Bring the elbows forwards, tuck your chin to your chest. We're gonna roll down one vertebrae at a time. Bend through your knees and we're just gonna ragdoll out in front of us. You can sway your hips one way and your hands the other, relax your arms. This is so lovely and releasing for your back. You could keep your hips facing forwards and just gently sway one side to the other. Take your time with that, relax your neck and your head. Oh. One of the things that people tend to do in a camel movement is hyperextend through their back. So it's really nice to lengthen that out. If you feel so, you could place your hands down on the ground there as you bend to your knees. You can take your feet wide can extend slightly through the back of the legs or fully if you feel to. Here we're just going to walk our hands round towards one side, keep the hips facing forwards and we're going to just anchor that there for a moment to really deeply lengthen out through the back and the waist. And the thing is with your camel movement, the more that you do the camel movement and stretches like these, the more that you can do the camel movement and stretches like these, your flexibility your stability. Let's take that through center and out to the other side. But also, as I said, your general well-being are boosted with those movements. The camel is also a wonderful natural pain reliever, which is handy to keep in your belly dancer's toolkit. Take a deep breath in, in your first aid kit, <laughs> as you breathe out. Let's gently come back upwards. You can use a little bit of a contraction through glutes as you raise upwards through one vertebrae at a time. Coming all the way up through mid back, to your shoulders and your upper back. Ah, your neck and your head. And coming into center, walk your feet inwards. travel out to the sides and plus a lot more fun. Yay! <laughs>